Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about something that's a bit of a wives' tale, if you will, out there in the collector's market regarding Japanese World War II rifles. A lot of people out there have, or I should say, are operating under the misinformation that Japanese rifles are dangerous to shoot. And that's kind of bled over into Japanese handguns as well, in particular the Type 94, which is a separate video in and of itself, but many people believe the gun is unsafe to shoot, and that's simply not true in either the case of the rifle or the handguns. As a matter of fact, the Japanese Arasaka rifles we're going to show you this afternoon are based on Mauser actions. And after the war in the United States, we did some testing of their actions and found that the guns were made of some of the best steel on the market, and the guns could take incredible overpressure loads and still not completely blow up in the user's face. However, after the war, we had a lot of GIs bringing guns home, and some of them got home and some of the guns did blow up in the GIs' faces, or the former GIs' faces. And why did that happen? Well, I'm going to explain that in this video, and this is how the misinformation spread about Arasaka as being potentially unsafe to shoot. We're going to talk about that and do a little bit of shooting with some Arasakas that are perfectly safe to shoot. So let's get started. This rifle, guys, is a last-ditch rifle. Many people attribute this rifle to being very dangerous to shoot. It could blow up in your face at any time, and it's simply not true. The last-ditch rifles were built to be used by not just the military, but people in Japan as pretty much armed the entire civilian population. So when the Americans arrived, should we have had to invade, they would basically be shooting at us from every window. And so they cranked these things out as fast as they could, and they deleted a lot of features from earlier made rifles. Let's just kind of start off by talking about the butt pad. So right here you can see the butt plate is actually made out of wood. It's no longer made out of metal. Moving forward, not a whole lot of attention was paid um, to actually fitting the gun to the wooden stocks. They weren't finally made by any stretch. If you take a look at the back of the bolt, where previously we had a very ornate mum design, now it's just a weld and some grind marks. We no longer have the dust cover on top. Uh, it did have the Imperial mum. This one's been molested. But moving forward, instead of having the full sights that the previous Arasakas had, now we have a non-adjustable rear peep sight that's machined into the base and is non-adjustable. Moving forward, the steel bands became more crude. The end cap is very crude with grind marks on it. Uh, exposed wood on the end, and then we have just a simple front post here with the uh, the wings of the po of the front sight deleted. So the guns were made as cheaply and as quickly as possible, but they're entirely safe to shoot, assuming the gun is in good working order. Any gun can become unsafe to shoot if not properly maintained. But there's a lot of folks out there, myself included, that shoot these last ditch rifles. A lot of folks and there's nothing wrong with shooting them. They are perfectly functioning firearms. To prove that, I'm gonna shoot it for you guys here real quick. Now I'm using some Graf & Sons 7.7 Jap ammunition. The Japanese started off using a 6.5 Jap in the earlier Arasakas, then they moved to the 7.7, and so all the last ditch guns will be in 7.7. Got three rounds loaded. I use Graf & Sons ammo quite a bit for my mill serps. They make really good ammo. All right, so now we have five rounds loaded. Now guys, I am not gonna use eye protection. My old man eyes won't allow me to, to see clearly. Don't do as I do. Always wear eye protection. Now I'm gonna shoot five rounds at a challenge target that's 100 yards away, and actually it's gray, and it's kind of hard to see against the, uh, the backdrop. So it's kind of, uh, kind of hidden a little bit, but I'm still gonna be able to hit it, I hope, five times. And again, keep in mind, these are fixed sights. That one hit. Not so much. There we go. Hit it again. Hit it again, and that's it. So you guys can see the rifle is more than safe to shoot. So where did this misinformation come from? Is there a Japanese rifle out there that GIs brought home that could blow up in their face? Let's get to that part of the story.
I'll keep this short, guys. YouTube is making it harder and harder for gun channels to exist on their platform, and that's in a number of different ways. First of all, they censor our content pretty heavily, and they demonetize our videos. A great way to support us at the Military Arms Channel is to swing by and become a patron supporter. Over on Patreon, you get all sorts of behind-the-scenes information, giveaways, deals on all sorts of stuff from Copper Custom. Just swing by, check out patreon.com forward slash military arms. Another great way to support us is to go buy our Forged From Freedom t-shirt store. There's a link down in the description below. If you'd like to have this full semi-automatic t-shirt, it can be yours. Just follow the link down below. Thanks for supporting us, guys. Sitting on my rifle bag now is a Type 38 Arasaka, which is chambered in 6.5 Jap. This rifle would have been manufactured before the war, was used in the early parts of the war before they transferred over to the Type 99 and 7.7 .7 Jap, which is another, a larger caliber, which they also wound up using in their machine guns. The Type 38 is a nice, recoiling, very mild shooting gun, but also a very well-made gun, as was the Type 99. After the war, the Allies, specifically the Americans, took a look at these actions, tested them, tried to destroy them through destructive testing, and couldn't even blow the darn things up. They were made of some of the finest steel and extremely durable. So the Type 38s and the Type 99s and even the last ditch guns are perfectly safe to shoot. As a matter of fact, arguably they're more safe to shoot than an Enfield or some other rifle that was used during the Second World War. They're extremely well-made guns. The Type 38 has a beautiful action on it. This one has its original dust cover, has its Imperial mum on it, it's unmolested. It's a very nice example of a Type 38. The 6.5 Jap is actually a pretty effective caliber. It's accurate, and honestly, you know, it's kind of funny how things come around. The Japanese wanted to go to a larger caliber with a 7.7, but a lot of militaries wanted to go back to 6.5 after the war, and then we started going down all the way to 22 caliber, but we're seeing a lot of people these days using 6.5 Creedmoor, for example. But anyway, I digress. This is the 6.5 Jap. I'm gonna shoot this rifle for you. This is probably my favorite Japanese rifle to shoot. Unfortunately, the 6.5 ammunition is very hard to come by. They make it in lots, and you have to buy it when it's available and stock up on it because it's just not readily available. Hopefully, Graf and Sons will have another run here soon because I'm running short on the 6.5. So the actions on these rifles are very smooth. They have a nice straight bolt, very easy to manipulate, and they have fairly decent sights. Again, it's really just nothing more than a Japanese-made Mauser. Let's take a shot at that challenge target down there at 100 yards and notice how mild the recoil is on this rifle. It doesn't kick at all. My magazine just got screwed up there. There we go. I don't know where my sights are on this thing. I see, it's hitting high. All right, this last shot should hit because now I know where to aim. Yep, last shot hit. So it's hitting a little bit high and right. I'm gonna make sure that that's right. One more round here. Yep, so it's hitting just a little bit high and left, I should say, not right. So as you can see, the Type 38 is a nice shooting rifle. It's very well made, it's accurate, and a lot of fun to shoot. So, where did this rumor come from that these things would blow up in your face? Now I'm gonna tell you. I just wanna show you guys this Type 38 is actually quite an accurate rifle. Uh, the target's kinda hard to see, it's gray, and it kinda doesn't contrast well against the front sight, plus the sights are just a little bit off. It's shooting over the left-hand side. But I figured out my hold to get it on target, I just want to show you how well this little Type 38 actually shoots. So, Five for five, I just had to figure out my hold. Basically on my Ipsic challenge target, I'm aiming down here and hitting him probably right around center of mass. So the guns do actually shoot quite well.
man do I love shooting these things. Anytime Tim breaks these things out, I just gotta shoot them. They're just way too much fun. Cool rifles. All right, guys. What you see in front of me would appear to be two Type 38 Arasakas. And technically, I guess they are. This is the one I just showed you being fired. This is the new one to the table. If you look at them, starting back at the rear of the stock, you'll notice some differences. First of all, the new rifle has this little plate on the end of it. On the other side, it has this marking on the stock that the other Type 38 doesn't have. But going forward, looking at the two rifles side by side, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference. You might notice a little bit of difference here in this area, where it kind of looks like pot metal. The sights are different, but the hand guards, the barrel, everything except for the front sight, which is unhooded and is a fixed front sight, is the same, right down to the cleaning rod being present. This rifle is 100% safe to shoot. This rifle, if I were to put a live round in it and pull the trigger, would literally blow up most likely. Why is that? This is what they call a training rifle. This is an Arasaka training rifle that they would have used in practice. They even gave these to school children to teach them basic marksmanship. These rifles would fire cartridges, but the cartridges were pud loaded and shot wooden bullets. It's a smooth bore. There's, there's no rifling in this barrel. However, the Japanese made the mistake of making it able to chamber a live round. That's a live 6.5 round I just put in there. And you can see, I just closed the bolt on it. I can even open it and it kicks it out. But if I would have pulled the trigger on that live round, the bore's too small, it has no rifling. And this, look at this guys, I can literally move this breech area with my finger. It's just a sand cast pot metal part. This gun would have likely have grenaded in my face. GIs bringing these home couldn't tell them apart. I mean, look at them, guys. It looks just like a standard type 38 rifle that's perfectly functional. You wouldn't know unless you examined it more closely and took a look down the barrel, and all you're going to see is just a dirty, straight barrel with absolutely no rifling. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the rumor got started that the Japanese rifles were unsafe to shoot. It's because of this training rifle that came back to the United States GIs were bringing them home, thought they had real rifles, put a live round in there, pulled the trigger, and kaboom, catastrophic failure. So that's where that old wives' tale comes from. So when you're out there shopping around looking for a last stitch rifle or Arasaka in general, what you need to be shopping for is anything but this rifle. And ironically, this thing has very little collector's value. I think I paid 100 bucks for it. 125 bucks. It really has no collector's value because it's not a shooter. And the only reason I want it is because I want to be able to show you guys what the training rifle looks like and how close it matches the actual rifle you can safely shoot. Pretty interesting piece of history, wouldn't you agree? I hope you guys found this video to be informative and hopefully useful. If you're out there shopping for an Arasaka and you find one that you're interested in, there's a couple of things that you should look for that will be dead giveaways that you're potentially looking at a training rifle which is not safe to shoot. It'll be in 6.5 Jap. It will have a cast part right here that looks very rough. That should be a machined part. It may or may not be loose. It won't have a mum. They never put the mums on the training rifles, from what I understand. But the dead giveaway is open the bolt, take a flashlight, or use a bore light, and look down the barrel. You're going to see no riflings. You may see a little bit of corrosion and, and gunk in there, but you're not going to see any lands and grooves. If you don't see rifling, don't shoot it. It's not safe. Another giveaway would be you may find plates like this, which would be rack numbers that you wouldn't normally find on a military rifle and then you may or may not see writing burned into the stock. I've seen it on the left side here, and I've also seen that writing burned into the stock on the right-hand side. So be very careful, guys, when you're out there shopping for Arasakas. You're fine with the last-ditch rifles. You're fine with the Type 38s and Type 99s that were actual combat rifles that have rifling in the barrel, but be very cautious. I don't even think the gun store I picked this one up from knew what they had. 
I don't think they knew that this was a training rifle and may have sold it to somebody that didn't know any better. They would have stuck a live round in it and the, there's a very high probability it could have blown up or had some sort of a catastrophic failure. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, I also want to thank you guys for sticking with us for 10 whole years. It's been an amazing 10 years. I can't thank you guys enough. We look forward to hopefully having another 10 years, but we never know what YouTube has in mind for us. We're constantly fighting for our rights here on the channel, if you can call it rights. Let's just say we're constantly fighting for our existence here on YouTube. We do have alternatives, Full30.com. You'll notice a lot of gun channels are moving over to Full30.com, pending these new policy updates that YouTube's been talking about. I'd also like to invite you guys to come by and check us out over at Copper Custom, which is our online store. You can find us there at coppercustom.com. Again, guys, thank you for 10 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.